Mm. Uh, George Parr, uh, you're a businessman and a very generous contributor to the Conservative Party. Look, uh, I, I didn't come here to have my, you know, my character drag through the, the, the mud in this way, you know. I mean, you know, it's outrageous, it's, my children might be watching this. No, uh, no, there's, there, there's really nothing wrong with contributing to a political party. I mean, it would only be improper if you expected some kind of favours from the government in return. I, well, I, I can say quite categorically that I've received no benefit, whatever, from, as a result of my financial contributions to the Conservative Party. Good, well, that's out of the way. And it's about bloody time I did. <laughs> um, so, what, what sort of favours are you, are you looking for? But there is one thing that, that I'm quite interested in. Oh, what, what's that? Well, actually, something I've been very interested in, really, personally. Mm -hmm. uh, for ten days now, uh, <laughs> since um, I was rung up by a senior uh, official at the Department of Transport, who wondered if I'd be interested in buying the British air traffic control system. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what did you say? Well, I, I said I, I was quite interested, but I, I, the one or two things I needed to know first. Yes, such as? Principally, uh, whether somebody in government wasn't taking the piss. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but wouldn't people feel rather uncomfortable about handing over the responsibility for, well, the safety of millions of passengers uh, to someone who was just going to make some money out of it? Well, I don't, I don't see why. You know, the market, the market, you know, the market mechanism works uh, to, to, to decide these things, yes. I but if you, were, if you were in charge of, of air traffic control, then then you would have a monopoly, wouldn't you? I mean, there wouldn't be any competition. And well, I mean, they could have competition. No, I don't see why not. You could have several firms um, doing air traffic control, and as a plane, plane came in to British airspace, they could tout for business. You know, they could <laughs> say, don't turn left, turn right, don't go straight on, go, don't get a gap, wait, the food's filthy, come and, 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 and land at our field. We'll give you a 50% discount on all the runner beans you can carry away. I mean, it could, it could work. It could, it could work. Well, yeah. I, yes, it doesn't sound very likely. And if you were a monopoly, presumably you could charge the airlines anything you wanted. Well, no, you see, there again, the market doesn't, wouldn't allow that, you know. I mean, the airlines pay, obviously, for our services, but um, you have to give them a good, cheap, economical service. Otherwise, you know, they would they'd fly somewhere else when they were bringing people to, 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 to Britain. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, I mean, we're not going to make our profits by, by putting up prices, putting up our charges. We're going to do it by cutting costs, really. 75% of the costs of running air traffic control is, is labour. I see, Cost. so you'll be, you'll, be, you'll be getting rid of people's jobs. Well, I mean, it's a typical state-owned company. I mean, it's heavily unionised, you know, it's overmanned, probably, and people are in it are overpaid, overqualified yes, people. but I mean, air traffic controllers have an awesome responsibility, don't they? I mean, it's well, a tremendously demanding <laughs> job. Well, <laughs> they say that, but I mean, what is it? I mean, it's just standing there with two things like, like, like table tennis bats in your hand, you know, and you, <laughs> you do this, don't you? <laughs> I mean, you know, anybody could do that, really. No, I don't think those are the air traffic controllers. <laughs> no, they, 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 they use uh, radar, you know. Oh, they, and, yeah, well, uh, yes, 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 sorry, they do that, I know, I know that. Well, that's just, well, it's not much more, a little shed with a thing going round and people in it looking at, look, looking at video screens. You've got two blips, one blip is one plane, one blip is another, all you have to do is make sure they don't, blips don't bump into each other. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's like a computer game, child of 12 could do it. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's not about that. You could see work experience for a bright kid. <laughs> they, 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 they love it, you know, better, more exciting than a paper round, isn't it? Yes, but, <laughs> yes, but I mean, even if you downsize your workforce in this rather unorthodox way, there, there still would be two great stumbling blocks on the road to privatization, wouldn't there? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, to begin with, the government would need a, a new civil aviation law, and uh, that's Legislation well, that no, they haven't they, got they, time they, I mean, they, they, they would legally need one, but, but uh, they, they got a way around that. They, instead of uh, getting new legislation in, they're going to use the 1994 Deregulation Act for a purpose for which it was not designed, and they, they'll, they'll use that, you see. I see. But they are desperate. I keep saying they are desperate to raise this money so to, to, to well, the taxes. They, they do, but, yeah. but, but, but equally, isn't there a, an international regulation that forbids people making money out of civil uh, aviation in this sense. Yes, yes, there is, but I mean, you can get around that too, you see. It, all, all they'll say is that the Civil Aviation Authority will still be in nominal control, they won't make a profit, but they'll have a contract with the private company, with my company, with, and they'll be allowed to make a profit, you see. It's what, it's what we call... Cheating. Cheating, yes. 
<laughs> if something does go wrong, if I can't knock it out, really. I mean, I'm going to buy this thing for 700 million pounds. That's, that's very cheap, because they are desperate to sell, you know, mm. to raise the money for the tax cut. So I'm going to get it cheap, and I can keep it for six months and sell it for the true price, about a billion and a half. That's 90 million pounds in my back pocket. See, it's done, <laughs> done all the time, in private yeah. but, but, I mean, you, you will have to run it for six months, and something terrible could go wrong in that time. I mean, you could have a... Well, God forbid, a, a mid-air collision, and you could have hundreds of casualties. I mean, what would happen? I, 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 I am dealing with that, that issue. Mm -hmm. How? I'm uh, asking the government if they'll uh, privatise and sell me the blood transfusion service, then <laughs> either way, I can, I can make money. George Parr, thank you very much. Pleasure.